So this is a little wild. Big Sean is back on the scene after having kind of took a hiatus and now he's dropping a music again. And now he's doing interviews where he is calling out Kanye West for allegedly stealing six million dollars from him. <laughs> what? <laughs> The entire thing is wow. So okay. he went on two different podcasts. One of them was Drink Tramps, and then another one he did an interview with Charlemagne the God for, I believe, The Breakfast Club. And we always knew that there was something kind of funky going on with Kanye and Big Sean right. over the years. We really ain't seen them together, even as Kanye has continued to kind of, you know, be Kanye and Big Sean kind of faded to the back and always kind of wondered what the hell was happening there. Um, and it seemed like Big Sean is finally tired of kind of keeping his mouth shut and had a lot to say about it. And he sound pissed. Ooh. My record deal said, this is a record deal. When you say management, you're not saying Rock Nation? Yeah, I'm saying Rock Nation. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm saying Jay Brown. Mm -hmm. Said it was wow. the worst deal he'd ever seen. Wow. Oh. And this man, I had to spend my own money auditing my label because millions of dollars are missing and you can tell when millions of dollars are missing. Of course. Right? Yes. You should be. I, I spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on my label mm -hmm. thinking Universal owed me this money and the money had been paid to good music. So let me ask you before we finish. Okay. No, let me ask you, bro. Yeah. If somebody owed you $500,000, how would you feel? I would feel... And they was up 100 million. How would yeah. you feel? Crazy. How, what about if they owed you a million? Yeah. What if they owed you three million? Right. Okay, what if they owed you five million dollars? Right. What if they owed you six? And, and no, listen, listen. Okay. What if they owed you that, bro? Right. I understand. And you showed up for them and you did all these things, right? Right. And they up billions. Right. My manager saw my record. Now also you gotta remember, uh, he's talking to Noor. Noor yeah. Who is a Kanye with him and Kanye like this. Mm. So I feel like he's doing that on purpose, like. Nah, nigga, you gonna have to stand with your partner. Like, nah, stand, man, keep, yeah. keep it 100. Like, you know what I'm saying? If if, if he owed you $6 million, are, you, are we having a problem in here? Right, how would you feel? So, I agree. I think Big Sean had a big issue <laughs> with the situation. Uh, and so he eventually, so he said that on Drink Champs, which, which again, was tough. And then came back and said this with um on his interview with Charlemagne the God. On you, the way he did on Drink Champs, and he owes you $6 million. Can y'all ever have a... Genuine relationship. Well, he doesn't owe me the money anymore. It got resolved. But oh, he paid you. Someone paid me. I guess it was him. But Word. Yeah, but I took a little less than I probably. I just wanted to end it instead of going to court for some shit over that. You what know? was the haircut? It was six million. So what was the haircut? Hmm. What was the haircut? How much did you end up getting? Uh, let's see. That is none of your business. <laughs> <laughs> but you good though, y'all. He did pay you basically. Well, yeah, so so the thing was, I had an issue, and I had an issue because I kept privately being like, yo, I need my money, to his lawyers, to him, not to not really bringing it to him so much because mm -hmm. I know the type of guy he is. He don't be dealing with all of the business aspect of things all the time. You know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm doing it properly. I'm going through the proper channels, management, they're like, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then after years go by, it's not like I was super hurting for it, but at the same time, it's like, it's getting first of all, and I don't want to get it misconstrued, right. like signing to good music was the best thing that could have happened to me in that moment in my life, period. I don't take it for granted. It was a golden opportunity signing to my favorite artist at the time and being able to sell 185 million records under good music. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It was a, a dream come true. And his only profitable artist at that. So it's like, mm. I, I wore that good music and still do. I still fuck with the, the brand and what it did for me and everything. Like, And I and there's a part of me that will forever fuck with Ye because of that too. For signing me, you know, I'll never discount that. But at the same time, with the deal I signed, he made more money off of me my music to me, which is totally fine. I'm not complaining about that. It's just a fact. Mm -hmm. People be trying to take this so much as a fact. It's just a fucking fact. So when you're owed money off of a deal that you're already getting the lesser part of it and you're hitting, I'm, I'm hitting up Def Jam because I'm auditing Def Jam. Jeff Harleston, you know Jeff Harleston. Yeah, absolutely. I know all I'm like, yo, I need my money, bro. Like, mm -hmm. where the fuck is my money? Because I'm auditing Def Jam. Every time I audit Def Jam, there's money sitting there. And then when I really broke it down and they were like, oh, yo, you sold 185 million records. This I'm like, wait, this don't equate, right? Where's my $6 million? 
Six million dollars. No one's getting back to me. No one's getting back to me. So then I drop a record. I drop a feature on Benny the Benny the Butcher's album, and I say something about it. Like niggas, that's up B's that owe me M's. I'm talking Woo! about Def Jam. Mm -hmm. Later on, and hey, that was a hard line. He said niggas is up B's owe me M's bar. <laughs> <laughs> that so it's good to hear that it got resolved. Yeah, but also you can hear. The change in energy. It sounded like when he was having a conversation with Nor Nori, he was fucking uh, angry. angry. And so now it's like, yeah, it's not that big of a deal. I got my money. You know, I can chill out a little bit. Yeah. And, and I do feel like, you know, niggas is going to play with you as long as you're going to play with you. So as right. long as you was going through the proper channels, you was keeping the cool, trying to keep it industry, calling up the lawyer and we'll get it to you next week and next week turn into three or four years. And now, you know, a couple of interviews, a couple of songs, and now the game is finding out about what happened. Right. You know what I'm saying? It makes everybody look bad who's involved. And so, yeah, I I would probably have to come off that money too. I don't exactly. need it. Especially if the man deserves it. Like, you right. Know, and he didn't have no problem problem with Kanye there's no beef he just wanted his money yeah I don't blame him you know what I'm saying <laughs> and, and he probably looking at it like yeah every like Kanye got paid correctly Def Jam got paid correctly why when it come to my check we all of a sudden loosey-goosey with it we all can't figure out where the money went like come on man it's lost the fam <laughs> exactly now we gotta figure it out so yeah or let me get it to you by Wednesday everybody else been paid four years ago we I stopped, yeah. the nigga stopped rapping for like four years <laughs> three years you know what I'm saying so um, but yeah it's good to hear that he got resolved and he got yes. his money back and I would rather hear that story uh, in hip hop than another story of another artist having a bad taste left in his mouth because of how his label did or the rapper that he signed to how they did him so it's dope to see a a positive conclusion and also hear the entirety of him being able to come to terms with the fact that yeah you know this happened to me but also having enough wherewithal to know like yeah but I wouldn't be here if Kanye West didn't sign me and Big Sean has one of the wildest stories of, of a rapper getting signed of all time hmm. Big Sean literally freestyled for Kanye West at a radio station and had like had no buzz, was a nobody, didn't like, it's really? not like Meek Mill. It's not like how Meek Mill got signed to Rick Ross. Meek Mill was like the hottest nigga in Philly and Rick Ross, you know, signed him because he already had a buzz. Big Sean was a nobody, freestyled for Kanye West. Kanye West really signed this nigga and changed his life overnight. That's crazy. So he had one of those types of stories like the, let me get in front of this rapper and rap and maybe he'll change my life. Like that really happened for Big Sean. Wow. He got in front of this nigga some type of way, started dropping bars, and that's how he got a deal. So even that is wild. Yeah, every rapper's dream. That's, that that's everybody rap, everybody <laughs> rapping has been looking for that moment their yes. entire lives, and it actually happened to Big Sean. So his story was kind of magical, but also you see the, the evils of the business that didn't come with nothing. You signed the worst record deal the man had ever seen because you probably, uh, not probably, you were literally a nobody when you got signed. Kanye West did everything. Everything. So I'm glad that he had the wherewithal to balance that out and realize like, yeah, these things happen. Um, and it's not an excuse for bad business, but overall, win, lose, or draw, yeah. I don't get to be Big Sean realistically if Kanye West doesn't listen to me, uh, you know what I'm saying? Co-sign me. Co -co sign me and decide to literally pluck me out the ghetto and make me a star. So, um, yeah, so, like I said, this is a crazy story, um, and but I am glad that we have a good ending to it, uh, as we know so far.